again. Yesterday, we told you about the warning from President Trump to evangelicals that there would be violence if Republicans lose the midterms. Okay, so we're going to beat you up if we lose. He told religious leaders during a closed door dinner on Monday night that his opponents are violent people who will overturn the gains made during his administration quickly and violently. Yesterday, the president was asked about those remarks. Well, I just hope there won't be violence. I can tell you that, uh, I can tell you that because that's the way, I guess, if you look at what happens, is a lot of, there's a lot of unnecessary violence all over the world, but also in this country, and I don't want to see it. Mike Barnacle, I'll let you take it from there. I mean, first of all, the, the opponents are violent. <laughs> and um, what do you make of the president of the United States? Really, is he predicting or is he inciting? You know, Mika, this has <clears throat> been an interesting few minutes listening to uh, all of this around the table. I would just say, let's not act surprised at this. Let's not be mm -hmm. surprised by this. This has been going on for months, at least 18 months, and if you include the campaign of 2016, for a couple of years. And here are the themes. Crime, immigration, yeah. Muslims, MS-13, border security. And the larger theme, unfortunately, for us right now in this country, culturally, is this. The bottom line is, Put all of those together as articulated by the President of the United States and various candidates for various offices, including Mr. DeSantis down in Florida. The larger overriding theme is, look, you white people, your world is being taken from you. Be careful. Listen to me because you are going to be swallowed up by a cultural tsunami. So follow us. We're the party of white people. Well, Jim Vandehei, uh, I, I do agree the shock um, is exhausting, um, but it is also a worry, a fear, and, and well, I'll just say in my opinion that we become desensitized. Uh, I think what happened uh, in the DeSantis campaign, those comments that he made were wrong, and they should be shocking at this point. But this is the direction of the Republican Party being led by this president. How does that... Um, how does that really show as a foreboding for the midterms, how ugly this could get? Right. I mean, you go back to that goofy ad that DeSantis did where he's reading, uh, where he's reading from the Trump book uh, to his kid. Why is he doing that? You keep asking about the Republican Party. It really is why this is happening. It's because it's the Trump, it's a Trump party. So if you go and look, talk to DeSantis' team and talk to his pollsters, what they'll tell you is, is that the vast majority of Republicans said they consider themselves Trump supporters first, not Republicans first. And that's holding true in almost every race. You're talking about Virginia. You have the exact same dynamic in Georgia, in the gubernatorial race there, where you have a, a Trump-backed conservative who no one thought could win on one side, and then you have a liberal minority woman on the other side. You're going to see a lot of the same politics in Georgia, which could become a swing state, as you're seeing in Florida, which are a which already is a swing state. And I do think this is a preview of what you're going to see in 2020. It is what, uh, it's what you guys were talking about in terms of it's, it is defining the Republican Party uh, right Right now, we have a new post up on, on Axios this morning looking at immigration, and I think this is uh, immigration over the last hundred years. There actually was a huge dip in the number of immigrants coming into this uh, country in terms of a total of the population. Over the last 10 to 20 years, it surged back up to where it was a hundred years ago. And I think there's a lot of Republicans who are uncomfortable with that. And I think Trump has, done, has used that issue uh, well in a political context to be able to get his party fired up, scared. And it's what you were talking about before in terms of, the, that's what links all the issues together. Immigration, gangs. Why would MS-13 be an issue in some districts where they don't even have MS-13 present? Because it plays on people's fear, and fear is such a motivator mm. in politics. I think it's one of the very unfortunate things about this moment in politics is that you have a large number of people who shouldn't be scared, who are scared about things that aren't even happening in their neighborhood, and that in many cases actually isn't even happening in the country.
Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.